Hi, and welcome to this month's edition of Inside OPSU. I'm Danae Moore, the Campus Communications Director at Panhandle State, and I'll be your host. Sit back and enjoy the show as we take a look at several of the campus updates that have recently been happening, as well as go over a brand new scholarship announcement. We're joined with Mark Howe. Mark, thanks for joining us today. He is the site supervisor here in Goodwill for Enel Green Power. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the company. I know you guys are currently the largest wind producer in Oklahoma, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And how many sites do you have across the state? As of right now, we have 10 sites across the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we have Goodwill here in the Panhandle, which is a 100 turbine, 200 megawatt wind farm. Uh, we're spread out through the state of Oklahoma uh, with uh, two more sites planned to be built in the next couple of years. Um, we're based out of Boston here in the United States. Uh, we have hydro, geothermal, solar, but our biggest production is from wind. Okay. And I think 97% of our power that's generated in Oklahoma stays in Oklahoma. Okay. And you aren't just in Oklahoma, though. You are global as well. Correct. Correct. We're, we have plants in uh, Italy, South America, South Africa, um, here in the United States, Canada, where if, if we're producing renewable energy, then that was there. Very cool. Well, we're excited to have you on the show today. I know we get to make an announcement about a scholarship mm -hmm. that will be made available with the investment from your company, and we appreciate your help for all the students. We're glad to be here. Glad to help. I have Randy Coble, the assistant site supervisor here in Goodwill with Enel Green Power. Randy, it's nice to have you. Thanks for having us. You want to tell us a little bit about the site here in Goodwill, where it's located, that kind of information? Sure. Uh, our site is actually located south of Goodwill. We have 100 turbines that span from just east of Texoma to just southwest of Guymon. Our farm spans nine miles east to west. It spans five miles north to south. And uh, you can see it all along Highway 54 from Goodwill. Okay, and today we're talking about an investment that y'all are making in a scholarship here at the university. Do you want to speak a bit about what that means for Enel Green Power? Well, Enel Green Power is very big on sustainability and investing in the local communities that its wind farms lie in. Um, as a local myself, I was born in Texas County Memorial Hospital. Uh, graduated from Texoma and to have the opportunity to go to work in a thriving industry like the wind industry and be able to stay local was a very big deal to me. Uh, I didn't have to move away from home and so with a venture like this that Anel and Oklahoma Panhandle State University are in, we'll give local kids the chance to get a local education and put that education to use in a thriving industry locally here in the Panhandle, which I think is a great thing. Um, it says a lot about Anel. Um, they're also very big into education. Part of this announcement mm -hmm. isn't just for scholarships to assist students to get wind degrees, but to also get degrees in the educational field. Um, and that means a lot to me. I come from a family of teachers, my wife, my brother, my grandma taught the second grade in Texoma for 25 years in the same classroom. So I think it's a, a positive thing for the panhandle and I'm really proud to see an LB on board with it. And I know you mentioned not only are you excited to see Enel be able to invest in the students and them continue their education, that's important to you, but also you have a history with Panhandle State, you have family that are graduates, so being able to keep it all local is very important to I, you. I think local is, is very key. Uh, I'm proud to be from the Panhandle, uh, so anytime things can go positive for the Panhandle, I think that's it's nothing but good. First off, uh, welcome to the University House. We are honored to have you here. I think what we're gonna try to do uh, is, I wanna go around and sort of introduce everybody. I know that there was great conversation going on. I apologize for, for, uh, for, for actually breaking some of that up. First things first, I need to thank, uh, I need to thank Dr. Blanton uh, and Danae Moore for putting this together. You guys have done a super job and you're, you're awesome assets for us. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I want to, everybody in here is like a big deal. So I'm not sure if I should go around and introduce everyone. Uh, so I do want to thank especially, uh, because he's been crucial to our success in my time here, the mayor of Guymon, uh, Kim Peterson. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. Uh, and definitely uh, Representative Murdoch. Um, 
you bring us so many opportunities and so many things. And uh, I enjoy the friendship more than anything, but just what you've done for your alma mater means the world to us. All of the NL folks here, I think everybody's going to get to hear from them uh, in just a second. But you're transforming our region. You're transforming with your business. But to come and bring these kind of resources to an educational program that will allow people who want to live and work here to do the great things that your company does, we're honored to be your partners. And so thank you so much for that. Last but certainly not least uh, is my partner uh, in all of this, uh, Mr. Hughes, Dwight Hughes, who is the superintendent of High Plains Technology Center. He's the technical piece and he makes all of this work for us. Uh, and you just, you've just been such a blessing to work with. And I think we have an expression back uh, at my home, at our ranch, where we call people my kind of people. And you're my kind of people. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. And so, and so we're just delighted uh, that you're actually here. I feel like my first experience with Anel uh, was when Mike Shannon brought him uh, to my office to meet them for the first time. And so, Mike, you do a good job for our region, and we're just delighted to have you here. So, with that said, I think what we'll do is we'll break off and we'll do individual interviews, uh, and then uh, we'll sit down, uh, we'll bless the meal, and we'll get going. Anybody else, while, it, while, while other people are doing um, your interviews, I'm happy to walk anybody else through the house. I walked a small group through here. This house is amazing. So uh, built uh, in 1929, just had a recent renovation. We use it uh, for all kinds of different events. This particular space was brought to us uh, by a very generous donation of the Baggerly family. Uh, and the Baggerly family built this on for this specific purpose. So just this week, uh, we've had the student government meetings. Uh, we've also had, uh, we also had a student event as well as a fundraiser for two of our student groups that raised, um, I guess, $10,000 respectively amongst them. And so we, uh, um, this is a tool and this house is a tool. And I would invite anybody uh, to come by and see this because it's part of the university. It's really the university's house. And we are honored to share that with anybody sure. who's here. Yeah? <laughs> sure. Okay. So thank you so much You're for welcome. this. I mean, this is amazing for us. And it wasn't just hyperbole. I'd like to know what Dwight has to say too, but it just, we have so many kids who want to live work here because they grew Absolutely. up here and having a program like this allows them to live where they want to live. And I think that makes them better employees. And to be part of that process for us is just a great blessing. We wouldn't be able to do it without these resources. So thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. Uh, and Nell's very proud to invest in Oklahoma's future. And that means our kids, our schools, our teachers. Right. So we're happy to be your partner. Very nice. Very nice. What you want? Uh, and uh, I would say it's like a connection with us and, uh, and Panhandle. It's kind of unique in itself of the things that we're doing, I think is breaking some ground uh, that I hope that'll spread across the state. But with these dollars that you guys are donating, it just jump starts a lot of our students to get into the industry. And, and like Tim said, a lot of these students want to raise their families in this area. And the sad thing is that the best export we've had is a lot of times been our people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this is an opportunity those people to stay in this area, work in this area, raise their family in this area, and support the schools in this area. And so this is great that you guys are doing this. And, and like I say, I just can't say enough about this partnership with us in Panhandle State, but also with Anel. So we can't thank you guys enough. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible to do a three-way handshake, but this, <laughs> this really is it. Yeah, the, the, there we go, just like that, yeah. And so, I mean, it, it really is something that nobody else is doing. Our goal is to actually be sort of the wind technology training facility for America. And so all of the bachelor's degree and associate degree will all be done online. Mm -hmm. yep. And so it will be possible uh, once they get the technical training that I think needs to be done in person because it is truly technical and truly hands-on. Once they get that, they can be anywhere in America and still get this degree, which, which is really revolutionary. It is. Absolutely. So. In the wind corridor. Yep. Perfect yes. place for it to be. Yes. So. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we hit it. Yeah, yes. kind of a deal. Finally. Yeah, exactly. And Oklahoma just moving up to number two and win. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's a good yeah. time. It's a good time. Yeah. We're here with Dr. Tim Fulton. It's nice to have you. We have recently just made a big announcement about a scholarship that's going to provide a huge amount of opportunities for the school. Can you explain it to us? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really excited. So, Enel Energy Group, which actually has uh, the windmill farm just south of our campus here. They approached this, I'd say, about six or eight weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They said that they were looking to invest, and what they wanted to do is invest in educational programs that would help the region 
So not just their industry, but they wanted to do what was best for everybody living in the panhandle. And so ultimately, through various meetings and various sort of presentations about what we offer, they came up with uh, an educational scholarship gift for our Panhandle Future Scholarship, okay. which is an awesome opportunity. So the goal is, is to raise a million dollars in an endowed account. Okay. And what that will do is anybody who graduates from a, uh, from a Panhandle school right. will be eligible to apply for that scholarship. And it will be a gap scholarship. So whatever their scholarships and financial aid don't cover, this, this scholarship will, will cover okay. the rest. So if they want to be a teacher and they want to live and work in the Panhandle, mm -hmm. this is essentially a free education. Okay. And so this group was the first people to sort of put that, put their money where their mouth was, and help us with 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 uh, with that. The rest of the money goes towards our brand new wind technology program, mm -hmm. which is a partnership with High Plains Technology Program. And what High Plains Technology Center does is they do the first year, which is all of the safety and technical training for working on windmills for wind technicians. Mm -hmm. We do the second year in an associate's degree and then up to a bachelor's degree, which would allow people to go to move from sort of the technician level up into uh, the leadership Management. level. Yeah. And so the idea is you can work as long as you want as a technician. Our classes, all of these classes, will be available online. Right. So it doesn't matter where you are in America. You can take it anywhere. Exactly. And, and we think we're going to be probably the wind technology university in America. It's been a long time since we could say we were the only ones in America at anything. And so for us, it's awesome. Same deal. So we'll use this money as a GAP scholarship for anybody who comes out of the High Plains Technology Technical Program. They'll be able to come to us either online or in person, and they can get on that sort of pathway to a greater life. As sort of the number two win state in America, right. and having, from what I understand, sort of the best or the strongest win corridor in America, we think we're going to get the pick of the litter in terms of the people who come here. I think what I would want people to know about this is if you want to live and work here, if you grew up here and this is where you want to be, maybe you're involved in a family operation or something else like that, you can still get this training, you can still get this degree, and you can live where you want to live and still make a great living wage for you and your family. That's what today means, and I'm so excited about it. That's awesome. What else is going on campus? I know there's oh, a man. lot. That's yeah. a pretty broad question. Let's start with the house real quick. Okay. We're right right now. We're in your house at the wow. university yeah. house. Um, how many events have you hosted uh, in the brief three months you've been yeah. here? Yeah. So just before Thanksgiving, uh, we moved in. We actually opened the house. I guess the day before Thanksgiving for our first event. Right. And uh, we estimate. I, I haven't really counted them exactly, but we estimate that. We've hosted about 40 events so far. Okay. So there's been student events. We've had multiple fundraisers here. Uh, we've had, uh, there were some people who did planning meetings mm -hmm. uh, for like the local school uh, district. All of the area superintendents have been to the house. So really, I think most people don't understand that the house to us is a place where we live and, and raise our family, but it's really a tool. Right. And it's, it's it, like today, it's a way for us to bring people together so we can talk about good things that, that we can all benefit from. And we appreciate, I know that's a lot for your family, yeah. we appreciate you opening it to us. I know I was at Perfect Pairings the other night and the students, you could feel their breath was just taken away when you said we're honored to be able to right. have you here. This is why we have the house that's here and awesome. that kind of thing. So that was really neat and yeah. we appreciate you guys. Thank you. I want to tell that. everybody, so we're going to have a grand opening yes. that's open to everybody. Uh, we have. We have people stop by the house all the time who want to see it, and we're, we certainly welcome that. We're going to have a grand opening where the whole place will be open for viewing on April 13th. Okay. Uh, and that'll be in conjunction with our alumni weekend, and so we're very excited about it. Okay. A um, couple other things I want to you touch bet. on real fast. Our enrollment, that's crucial. Yeah. It's huge. Spring enrollment, our, our numbers were in, and we were predicted to be up for yeah. the first time since 2011. Do you yes. want to talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So, the way we count enrollment is what we call head count. So that's how many bodies are here. The other thing we count is credit hour production. That's what generates revenue for the university. It's the first time since 2011 we've had an enrollment increase. That enrollment increase was so large that it covered the enrollment decrease we had from the previous year. And so to me what that shows is we have more people on campus like we did in the fall, but they're coming back and they're taking more credit hours. And so that's good for us in terms of money, right. but it's really good for the students because the more, the more hours they take per semester, faster to graduation, and the more likely they are to graduate. 
people who take enough hours to graduate in four or five years generally graduate. People who take longer than that typically don't. And so our counselors and our faculty in particular are doing a great job of getting them into more credit hours so that they'll actually walk in four or five years. And so the money's important and we're really happy about that, but it really is about we're putting people that we're in charge of, we're putting them on a path to be successful. Right, and, and ultimately to me, that's, awesome. that's your that's your passion exactly. and why you're doing it. Exactly. Okay, one last thing I want to cover. I know it's on everybody's mind as you drive around campus. It's easy to see there is a facility update going on. Um, a lot of work being done at the football field right now. Can you touch briefly on what's happening and the vision? You bet. So that's really a neat project too. It's a partnership uh, as well. Texas County uh, and Jack Strain have helped us a great deal. Goodwill Public Schools uh, have contributed money. Uh, and then, of course, Anchor D Bank, with their very generous uh, donation, have come in. And so we're going to turf our football field, and it will be open for use for Goodwill Public Schools as well as us. Okay. What a lot of people don't understand is, so it's unheard of to have that kind of partnership between a public school, the county, a university, and a private donor. Right. I mean, that's in alone, that's hard enough to say, much less kind of coordinate. And so, thanks to Dr. Blanton, we've made all that come together. The best part about the turf is we estimate that we'll save thousands of dollars a year not maintaining a grass field. So I have, I have personnel savings, I have water savings, I have all kinds of things. And so, it's a more modern facility. We're excited about having local kids being able to play on that kind of a facility. All their heroes uh, at other colleges and universities as well uh, as in the NFL, they all play on this surface. And so to be able to provide that in an area that really doesn't have a lot of that, we're very, very excited about that. So, so I, I also want to, you and I talked before we came on, we're excited because we are finally to the point where we're going to solicit public comment for our shooting range. And I know a lot of people have been at, everywhere I go, everybody asks me about it. That step is the second to last step from being completely approved so we can start to build it. And so that 90 day comment period will be important. Okay. Uh, everywhere I go, everybody's very, very supportive. Uh, but we want to hear from everybody. And so I think that facility, much more so than the house or any of these other things, is going to be something where the entire community will benefit. It will bring people in from other states and other communities. They'll come to our community, they'll spend money, they'll stay in hotels. And so that's what a university should do. They should be a, an attractant from all other places that bring revenue and resources for everybody. And it's not going to hurt us to have them come to our beautiful campus right. while they're at it. Right. And so for us, it's kind of a win-win. Awesome. Well, lots of good things happening. Thank you for all your hard work. You it's bet. exciting to see the university so involved in a number of different partnerships. So yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. you We're pleased to have the opportunity to talk with Representative Murdoch today. Thank you for being here. Not a problem. Not a problem. We've recently made a big announcement about a scholarship that's going to benefit the university in a great way, as well as the community. Can you tell us a little bit about your thoughts? I, I, I love it. And I called Tim, or President Fountain, uh, last week, and I, I said, you know what I would love to see is Panhandle State being the premier win college in the nation. And him and I both agree on this, and, and you know we're in the right part of the world. Right, we um, just talked about that with him as well, and right. he we, said that's what he's excited for. A few years ago, I had read, we have the best win in the world right. for wind production. Okay. And so it only stands to reason that the best degree program for wind energy should be right here. Right, and it's a beautiful thing that he was telling us how the technical part will be done through a partnership mm -hmm. with, in, with the tech Right. Check in, in right. Woodward, and then they'll be able to do their associates and bachelors online at their own pace as they're working. Right, right. This, I mean, you. A lot of times, people, you know, the common sense factor doesn't work in, but this just makes perfect common sense, uh, and it benefits our kids. And you know, there is kind of like someone said a while ago, we export our best commodity and that's our kids. And, and I, for me, my vision is, is to provide opportunities here in the Panhandle that if, if our kids want to stay, there's an opportunity to, to raise your family and, and, and make a good living right here at right home here. and not have to go to Amarillo 
or Denver or Dallas or Oklahoma City. They can right. stay right here. Another thing with this scholarship, it's going to go to benefit two initiatives, not only the Pathways to Success, the, the WIND energy mm -hmm. program, but also the Panhandle's Future, which is the, the teacher education program. So that's another way those that are looking to go into education are going to have another scholarship opportunity, and I'm sure that was another thing you were excited about. Oh, oh yes, most definitely. And you know, at one time, Panhandle State produced some of the best teachers coming out, and, and I'd like to get back to that reputation uh, as far as students coming from Panhandle State. Right, and just maybe to be able to offer money for those that maybe are passionate about it, but it's just not an option. So this will open up doorways. Right, right, and and you know, and, and with teacher pay where it is in Oklahoma, right, you can't invest a whole lot in your education to come out and make thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars a year. It's just you, the numbers don't add up. And and if we can provide help through scholarships for their education, it just it just helps people make that decision. Are there any other things, especially as an alumni, I had the pleasure of interviewing you a while back and discussing a little bit about your time here and some of the things that you've done while you were a student, and I know it gave you a lot of opportunity just to continue working at home and going to college, just open up the doors a lot while you were a student. But now you're getting to see all the changes, the updates, I'm sure there's lots you're excited about. Do you oh. want to highlight anything? Yeah, I mean the shooting range. Uh, so I, I had to come back over here for about five years and I came over. I didn't really recognize the campus. Uh, it's amazing what's going on here at Panhandle State. Uh, we've got the shooting range that's coming. We've got this program. And, and President Fountain has done so much. He thinks outside the box. And when, when you're the size of Panhandle State and, and you're struggling and you're just trying to bring kids in, you have to think outside the box, and 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 President Fountain has. I mean, look at our enrollment here last year, and what's fixing to come in this next year. I mean, record enrollment. So, Panhandle State's growing. We are we're on the move, and it's because of these programs that we're thinking outside the box. Exactly. It just goes hand in hand with what we're here today talking mm -hmm. about. Well, we appreciate your time. Do you have anything to add before we go? Go PSU. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for Thank your you. time. We're back now. We have the pleasure of joining with Superintendent of High Plains Technology Center, yep. Dwight Hughes, yes. and you are located in Woodward. Yes. Today we have been talking about a partnership that's going to kick off with the Nell Green Power and some scholarship money that's going to go toward the wind energy program here. Right. And you have a big part in this program. Yes, yeah, so the piece that High Plains plays in this is that uh, we provide the hands-on piece and have been. We started back in 2010 when we could see the wind turbines starting to pop up around and we felt like our area needed to be an area or at least a training facility to train the workers to work on those wind tech farms. And so we got in the game, actually wrote for a, a federal grant to start our program. Okay. And we feel like, and, and we would put ourselves up against, we probably have the nation's best technical training program in the nation. When Dr. Fulton came and we met, we got to talking about how we could partner together because he saw the same things as wind turbines all around right. uh, Panhandle State. And so we looked at what he did well and what we did and how we could join those. And then we became partners to where the students can go through our program and get the hands-on piece and then roll that into their associate degree with some credit hours, finish associate and go on for a bachelor's. And, and then along the way, if those students want to go through our program, roll out and work a while, come back into the associate degree, they can do that. And it's a, it's a very unique and it's kind of, it's a new thought for Oklahoma on the way we work together. And, uh, and I was so appreciative of Dr. Fulton kind of giving us an opportunity to do that. Uh, and then the Enel piece, which adds to that, right. is the money, scholarship money for students in the Panhandle, Northwest Oklahoma, to take advantage of not only the technical piece that I have, but also the associate and bachelor's degree that Dr. Fulton has. So it's a great partnership all the way around, not only with educational entities partnered together, but also business and industry partnering with us. So. Some great teamwork, great for team. sure. And it is a great team. Good people, and that's why I said, I think it, everybody here, it, that we weren't worried about 
turf. We were worried about what was best for the students in Northwest Oklahoma and the Panhandle. And I think that's why it's such a great partnership. And at the end of the day, our students in this area are the ones that win. Yep, and it is, like you said, it's a great illustration of how one, when we do join together and team up, we can do really great things, yes. especially for our students, which is all what we're passionate about. And it's about. such a great industry for our students to get into because not only do they get the training in this area, then they can stay in this area and make good money and raise their families. And then that's the repeat. Then we bring their kids in and we train. So it, to me, it's, it's a great deal of getting this ball rolling. And to me, I hope it just carries into the future. Sure. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we? No, I, I just want to personally thank Enel for their contribution to the scholarship because a lot of these students, that's that little jump start to help them get into the industry. And so that's such a great partnership there. And then to say thanks to Dr. Fulton and his staff for, for seeing the vision that we had and, and buying into that. And, and like I said, it's such a great partnership. And, and I hope it grows not only from Wintex, but just some other industries that exactly. we serve. Exactly. So. Yeah, very good. It's a good, good start. And it we'll is. be excited to see the future. Yep. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Well, thank you very much. Back with another campus update, we have Vice President of Outreach, Dr. Ryan Blanton, and he is going to fill us in on details about the turf project. Let's start at the very beginning. What's the vision for this? How did it come about? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to modernize our facilities so that we have uh, exceptional facilities for our, our community. And so one of the biggest areas we need is, is, is football. Football is very important to the communities around here. We didn't really have a showcase kind of field for uh, our student athletes to, to experience a larger than life kind of atmosphere. And so the, the vision is how can we partner with our, our community to create a great field that we can all use. And so we get what we're doing out here, which is a turf replacement project. We're gonna uh, put an artificial turf down. And we're doing this in partnership with Anchor D Bank, uh, the Texas County Commissioners, and our local school here, Goodwill Public Schools. And so we'll all be able to use it, and we'll, all of our student athletes will be able to experience uh, what it's like to play in a, in a very nice facility. Very cool. So it'll be open. Goodwill will be playing games yes. here as well, and that type of thing. And, and another interesting part of it is, is uh, we are putting lines on it for a, a soccer field. So it'll be a du dual use uh, facility where we can start a soccer team, Goodwill can start a soccer team. Uh, soccer is very popular in the communities out here and um, we really don't have a facility to play in and so that's addressing another need in our community. Okay, can you give us a bit of the vision, I mean, trying to imagine what it looks like now, it's torn up now, but going back to what it did look like to where it's going to be, are there going to be great differences? Uh, there won't be tremendous differences. Uh, obviously, we had a, a track around the field, which right. we won't have at, at this point in, in the uh, process. Um, but what we're trying to do is, you know, at the end of the year, the field gets dead and it's hard right. to see. And so with this, it'll be an all-weather, all all-purpose field, uh, state-of-the-art, um, very bright and vibrant. And all the water drainage systems is, is underneath it, and so it's flat. Uh, we cut down on our watering okay. costs, our mowing costs, and we just have a good looking field all year round. Okay, um, tell us about where it's at right now. I know you've done a lot of dirt work, I guess yeah. I would say, in the last couple of weeks. If you've been following us on social media, you've seen the updates. Uh, it looks a lot different. Yeah, definitely. The, the Texas County Commissioners have come in and they've, they've stripped out the track and the top layer of dirt. Uh, right now we need to do some infrastructure uh, work, we need to create some drainage lines to other parts of the campus and then in about a month or so the contractors will come in and start uh, doing the underground infrastructure and then we'll start laying turf on top of that um, and we should be complete by the end of July, just okay. in time for football season. Perfect, so we are thinking we will be able to play, it'll be finished and ready to play the first game of the season. I know Coach Gaskamp referenced that when he was doing a speech about his National Signing yeah. Day covering that. How it's projected for the first game of the season. We'll all get to take a peek and be right out there in the midst of it. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a showcase facility for the region, and um, we'll be ready to go for football season and have every everybody out here to help us celebrate the grand opening of it. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you for the information. Thank you.